Back in 2019, I made a little video about opening a Tide bank account. I think it was one of the first videos on YouTube about Tide, and it was my first experience of opening a business bank account that didn't involve weeks of waiting around and endless pointless paperwork. So we're about five years down the line now, and I thought it was about time we revisited this subject. What does a Tide bank account look like now? What other benefits can it bring to your business? And is it still possible to open one in under five minutes? Hiya folks and a very warm welcome back to the Small Business Toolbox. I'm Andy Mack and I've been working with the small business community for almost my entire adult life. Over that time I've had some horrendous problems with the big high street banks and since their main USP of being on the high street doesn't really exist anymore, I started looking into alternatives. When I first started using accounts from the likes of Starling and Tide, honestly, it's a whole different animal. And since Tide are essentially a tech company as opposed to a traditional bank, they are really pushing the boundaries of what a bank can do for your small business. More about that later on. Full disclosure, I am not being paid a penny by Tide to make this video. They don't even know I'm making this video, but I used Tide for my own businesses several years ago and I was so impressed I decided to partner up with them. And as such, I do receive a small amount of commission if you open an account. And as a bit of a thank you to you guys, I've negotiated a deal with them where you get some cash back and 12 months of free transfers. Just use the code business toolbox when you sign up to make use of that offer. And these offers do change from time to time, so double check down in the description below just to see what the current details are. Lots to cover in this video. Later on, I'll have a look at some of the more advanced features of the account and some of the new offerings that they're bringing to the table now. I'll also answer that age old question. Are they offering the 85,000 pound FSCS protection that you would get from a normal high street bank yet? And does the account handle international transactions? Anyway, let's have a look at how the whole sign-up process works, how long it takes, and I'll give you a bit of a tour of the account and how it all works. So you can sign up via the mobile app, but I'm gonna show you how to do it via the desktop because it's a little bit easier to screen grab that. I'm just gonna use the link from the website and that makes sure that the offer applies and all that sort of thing. So you can see there, we're gonna be using the business toolbox code and we're gonna get the 75 pound cashback offer. I'm not sure what offer will apply at the time you open your account, so check in the description for a bit more information about that. But all I'm gonna click is open an account. We are gonna do this as a sole trader. Obviously make sure any eligibility criteria apply and click continue. I'll pop my email address in and click continue. Fill in your full name and click continue. Fill in your date of birth, add your mobile number, nationality, so I'll just put British, continue. Fill in your address details. Fill in your business name and VAT number. If you are VAT registered, you're probably not going to be VAT registered, so we'll just leave that blank. And if you don't have a business name, you can just leave that as your personal name and we'll click continue. Business address, I'm just going to use the personal address and that should be fine. Continue. Choose an appropriate business category and continue. We've got various terms and conditions here for the FSCS protection eligibility, bank account terms, all that sort of thing. If you want to have a read through that, you can. I'm just going to agree to all of those and continue. Limited time offer, accept card payments with a tied card reader. Interesting. We'll maybe come back to that at a later date. We'll just do maybe later for that. And now we need to head over to the app and do the rest of it on the phone. So sure enough, a text message has come through to activate the app. So I'm just gonna click on that and use the link in the message. We will install the Tide app. Click open. I'm gonna click open a free account. I'll pop the email address in that I used earlier. And now we're up to the identity verification. So we'll click next. We'll do choose document. I'm gonna use the driver's license. We will enable camera, allow it to take pictures. This bit is a little bit tricky to show you, but I'm just taking a photo of the driving license from within the app. And there we go, it's happy with that. We'll do submit. And it also wants a picture of the back of the license. And it seems to be happy with that. We'll do submit. It needs to do a selfie, which is almost impossible to do while filming, so I'll quickly do that. So I'll just do 
upload photo. It's asking for a security code, which I'll type in. We will do continue. You've then got options of different account types and you can drill into this and see if there's anything that particularly floats your boat. But we're just going to go for the standard account. And I think that's it for now. We now just need to wait for the account to be activated. Now, I'm not 100% sure if the account's active yet because we received a notification saying it was literally straight away. I'm going to give it a try. I'm not going to bother with fingerprint authentication for this, but obviously you can set that up if you want. Welcome to Tide. Go to your account. It looks like we're up and running. We've got an account number and sort code, so I can transfer some money into the account and we can have a little bit of a play with it. Obviously, a card will turn up in the post at some point, so we'll keep an eye on how long that takes to turn up. And it is asking for some additional business details, which I'll have a look at that now. Okay, so tax and compliance. So it's asking for various tax details. I'll go through that offline because that'll take a little while for us to dig everything out. And it also wants to know annual turnover as well. So I'll fill in all of that sort of stuff. And then I guess that's us up and running. That was even quicker than last time. That was literally instant. So I'll show you through the Tide desktop application first because it's a little bit easier to screen grab that and show you what's going on. To log on to that, just visit the Tide website, do log on and it'll come up with a QR code. You scan the QR code from the Tide app, it tells you how to do it, it's dead easy. And then you are logged into the account like this. So we've got our sort code and account number here. Interestingly as well, we've got a thing called Receipt Importer. I've got no way of testing that yet because we haven't got any transactions, but we'll try and have a look at that in a minute. But the really interesting thing is when I'm clicking on Account Details, and I'll scroll down, and what have we got here? We've got an IBAN and Swift. I need to speak to Tide because it looks like they might finally have international payments all set up. That is very interesting. So we've got international account details, GBP and EURSEPA. I'm not sure what that is. Get EURSEPA details. Let's try that. So it says here when we receive payments from effectively a country in the EU, they'll convert it to pounds and credit your primary account. You can't make EU payments yet, but you can receive payments. So all you would do is get that EURSEPA details, I guess. Um, should I do it? Let's do it. Blah, blah, blah. There's all the fees and things like that that apply. I'm not going to apply for that because I've got no way of testing it or anything. But uh, yeah, that looks like it's a thing now. So that's quite exciting. I think what we're going to need to do is put some money into this account so that we can have a proper play around and see what it does. So I'm going to transfer £100 from a Starling account with the reference of test into this new Tide account. I'll do review payment. Category can be other. Make payment. And we'll see how long this takes to go through. I just need to confirm it via the app on my phone, which I will do now. That's gone through, apparently. I'm just going to refresh the screen in the Tide app. And wow, yeah, literally instant. That's come through straight away. So we know the account is working absolutely fine. So as an additional test, let's transfer some money back to that account. So I'm going to go to payments on the left there. And OK, so I need to set up the recipient via the mobile app. So I'll quickly set that up and I'll come back to the desktop app. Right, so I've added the recipient via the mobile app. That was really straightforward. So I'm just going to go to payments again and we can see this looks a bit different now. So we've got from Tide current account and we'll select the payee. It did all the verification matching straight away. It was literally instant. So we know the account details are correct. I'm just going to transfer £50 as a test. Again, I'm going to call it test just once and we're going to do it immediately. And why won't it let me submit? Ah, the reference needs to be longer than six characters. We'll call it test trans. And it can't have spaces. Test trans, all one word. And submit payment. Go. And similar to Starling, I need to approve that via the mobile app. So I'll quickly do that. So I'm on the mobile app at the minute. You can't see. And I'm just going to click Approve Payment. Enter my security code. And that's gone through straight away. It says Payment Approved. 
I'll just click on accounts and tied current account to have a look at what's going on and we can see our £100 that came in and then we've paid £50 out and that's gone through straight away I think. Of course Starling has logged itself out and sure enough that has gone through literally instantly my phone pinged straight away and see that transaction went through £50 received at 5.04. And if I check my Tide account, it says indeed, if I just click on the transaction, it says it was transferred at 5.04. So, so far so good. And literally two days later, and what have we got here? Very exciting. We have our Tide card that has taken under 48 hours to turn up. I applied for the account on a Wednesday afternoon and this has turned up on the Friday morning. So that's not bad going. So we're up and running. It is a commercial business preferred card if you are playing along at home. MasterCard obviously. So I can activate that in the app and get that up and running straight away. So I've activated the card within the app on the mobile phone. It was dead straightforward. So that is now all up and running. So back to the desktop app now. We'll just have a quick look around and make sure everything is set up properly. And I'll give you a bit of a tour. First of all, if you drill into Tide Current Account and then press the Account Details button and then click the option for Limits. It's useful to have a look through here because this tells you all of your transaction limits. So for example, we've got a maximum account balance of £500,000. We've got a monthly transaction limit of £150,000 and a single outbound transaction limit of £15,000. We've also got card transaction limits, £25,000 monthly limit per account, £20,000 daily limit per card. I'm not entirely sure how that fits in with £15,000 single outbound transaction limit. And we've got a £500 daily cash withdrawal limit. If any of these figures aren't going to fit with your business model, you're probably going to be better finding a different type of account. But you will probably find most accounts for young businesses are going to have account limits similar to that anyway. So you'll notice on these two test transactions here, we've got to be categorized. So for a start, let's set up a couple of categories and there's all sorts of things you can do in here. So let's have a look at to be categorized first of all. And here are all the categories that are available. This is an income. So I'm just going to categorize that as income. We don't really need to add a receipt, but I can add a note to this, which I will do. So I'm just going to put test income transaction and save that. You can also add tags and that can be quite useful. So what I'm going to do is add a new tag here. I'm just going to call this test and add, save that. And we'll come back to what you can use that for in a moment. You can also add a VAT breakdown as well if needs be. So you can do 20% save and then you can see there it's automatically calculated the VAT. So I'm just going to change that to no VAT and save. And then if we head over to our test payment out of the account, again, to be categorized, I'm just going to put this as other expenses. I don't think you can change anything in this list, by the way but it does seem to cover more things that you're likely to need. Obviously you can add a receipt in here and upload an image or a PDF. Again, we can add a note. So I'm going to put test expense transaction. Again, we can tag it. So I'm going to use the tag that we created earlier, which was test and save that. And once again, you can add VAT if you are VAT registered. Then from here, what you can do, obviously this is just going to show a running list of all your transactions that you've had, but you can apply a filter and you can filter either by a certain category or you can filter by tags, which is really, really useful because there are situations where you might want to filter by a very specific thing that doesn't necessarily fall into the remit of a category, but you still want the ability to easily search for that type of transaction. So if I just click save, apply filter, obviously you can also apply date ranges in and things there as well. I'll just do apply filter. And then obviously it's showing all transactions that had that tag assigned to it. That is really useful.
The receipt importer, which I briefly mentioned earlier, this is specifically designed so that when you make purchases on the Tide card, you can then match receipts to that purchase and it should automatically match them. So it only supports JPEG and PNG files at the moment, but you literally just drag and drop them onto here and it will attempt to match them to the transactions that you've had on your Tide card. So that is really useful because it potentially means that you can keep all of your accounting records within the Tide app and not bother with separate reconciliation for example if it's all within the one bank account there's no need to separately reconcile it if you have made use of that it'd be interesting if you can post down in the comments and let us know how well that works other things you've got in here obviously you can export transactions loads of options for the format of the export you've got standard csv zero free agent wave sage and quickbooks we'll just pick standard and export and that's created a csv that you can do whatever you want with then if you click the more button you've got scheduled payments which as far as i understand is essentially standing orders and from here you can see queued payments and scheduled payments more about that in a minute and then the other thing we've got here is direct debits we don't have any direct debits set up at the moment but this is where they would be listed so heading over to payments, if you wanted to set up, for example, a recurring payment, it could be someone's wages or whatever, then all you need to do, the way that we did a test payment earlier, so I'm just going to set this as being for £10. For the reference, I'm just going to keep it as test trans, but obviously you can change that to whatever you want. And for the frequency, I'm going to say monthly, and obviously you can select a date of when that starts. So let's start it on the 20th of the month and I will do submit payment. I then need to head to the mobile app to approve the payment. So I've approved that within the app. And now if I go to more and scheduled payments, you can see the scheduled payment that we just set up there. And obviously from here, if needs be, I can cancel the payment, which I will do for this because we don't actually need that. And that's it gone. So that basically covers what you would have previously called standing orders. And we've got obviously the direct debits that we've already looked at. And then if we head to invoices and bills and click manage, we'll add a test customer in here just to see how this works. So add customer. I'm just going to use Tide as a test address for this and confirm. So obviously you can add as many customers as you want into this. Go back to the manage section and click the template. And then you can obviously customize your logo and all that sort of thing. I'm just going to add the small business toolbox logo as a bit of a test. Obviously change any contact details and things that you want to appear on invoices. We'll just leave it on the default 28 days, but I will add a footer message in just to see what that looks like. I'm just going to put this is a test footer message and save that and we can then create an invoice so i'm just going to click that create button over there i'm going to use the drop down to select billy's company that we added earlier what we're going to invoice billy's company for we'll invoice for a box of frogs um 10 boxes of frogs and they were 500 pounds each and we'll also invoice for some frog food and that was 200 pounds that'll do it's automatically put an invoice number in but you can obviously override that if needs be and we might as well change the category to income straight away we'll do next from here you can customize everything that's going to go out to the customer and you can also send a copy to yourself so you can see what's gone out i'm just going to click send and that is it done let's have a look at the invoice it's created so here is the email that the customer would receive and it's got the invoice attached there as a PDF. And there it is there with all the details from the account and that's automatically gone out to the customer. It's got your logo on, it's got all your business details, box of frogs, frog food, £5,200 and it's got payment method is included there. And there is that test message that we included as the footer of the invoice. So then if we head back to the account in invoices and bills, we can see the invoice there. We'll just click on that. And from here, we can see that the invoice is pending. You can view a copy of the invoice. 
You can clone the invoice if you pay extra for the invoice assistant function. We can mark it as paid. We can cancel it. We can also set up automatic invoice payments, which effectively sets you up to accept direct debits using Go Cardless. I'm not going to go into the detail of that at the minute. And again, if you pay extra for the invoice assistant function, you can automate a lot of things such as when the customer pays you, it will automatically match it up to that invoice so you don't have to manually go through and mark the invoices as paid. As I say, invoice assistant is an add-on. At the moment, it's $5.99 a month. And if you want to make use of the direct debit collection thing, you're looking at 1% to 2% of the total invoice value. For the moment though, I'm just gonna cancel this invoice. Again, you can customize the message that will go out to the customer and you can send a copy to yourself as before. So I'm just gonna click send and that is the invoice canceled and moved to the archive. So you can see here, you can filter your invoices by outstanding, paid, drafts and archive. I'm just gonna go back to outstanding and you'll see we've got nothing outstanding because the only invoice that we created, we've got rid of. Another thing that you can do within here is manage your bill payments. Now this is very similar to making payments through this section of the account here, but it allows you to add a bit of extra information in. So if I click on the bills option and pay a bill, you can either upload a PDF and it will automatically try and extract the information about that bill out of the PDF, or you can enter the details manually, which I'm gonna do here. You can enter the supplier details in here, so you can add a new supplier, supplier name, email address, company name, all that sort of thing. I'm not gonna bother with that at the moment. And then if we scroll down, pay to account, that's gonna be the recipient that you would have already set up through the mobile app. I've just added the test recipient that I did earlier. Issue date, we'll just say that that is gonna to be today. Due date, for argument's sake, we'll say that's the 20th. And then you can add line items to the bill as well. So add item. So we'll just put bulk purchase of frogs. We'll say 10,000 of them at two pounds each. We'll also add boxes at 50 pence each. Confirm that. We can put in a category, so we're just gonna say stock. And then you can either save as outstanding or continue to payment, which I'm not gonna do because I don't want to buy 20,000 pounds worth of frogs, but you get the general idea. That's a really nice, simple bill payment system built into the account. And that's kind of the account in a nutshell. If I just head to tools and services, I'll show you a few of the extra bits and pieces that you could add on if needs be, but there's not a lot else that you'd want to do in a bank account, really. So first of all, we've got accountancy integrations. So by default, you can integrate with Xero, but you can also integrate, I think, with Sage and QuickBooks and other things. There's information on the link there if you want to know more about that. Memberships is just the different types of tied accounts. So if you want to switch to the plus plan or the pro plan or the cashback plan, then you can do that here. We're just keeping it on the standard free account at the moment. If you want to know the difference between all the accounts, you can have a quick look there, but you're best going onto the website to have a look into that in case any of that changes. Credit allows you to apply for loans, startup loans and all that sort of thing. I'm not gonna go through that on this video. Getting paid lets you sign up for their new card reader, which I haven't tried yet. We'll probably save that for a future video, but that looks really interesting. If you want to accept credit and debit cards from your customers, you might be able to do that directly from Tide now. We've also got Tide Instant Saver, which is a brand new thing where you can get, at the moment, 4.33% interest on your business savings. I'm not gonna set up a savings account at the moment, but if that's of interest, you've got the option there. Tide accounting, again, I'm going to save that for a separate video. This is a whole other beast. You have to pay for it. 9.99 plus fat per month at the moment. Watch this space and I will hopefully get a separate video put together all about that. Receipt importer, we briefly looked at that before, but we can't do that because we haven't got any receipts to import. And then open banking connections as well. The open banking connections, if you go to the homepage of accounts, it makes full use of the open banking protocol so you can connect an account just by clicking the connect account button here. Again, I'm not gonna go into the full details of that in this video. You would just click connect your business account and then you could view all of your bank accounts within the one application. 
So to answer my question from earlier, can you still open an account in under five minutes? Well, I had an account up and running in under four minutes. I had a fully functioning account number and sort code, managed to transfer some money in and everything seemed to work absolutely fine. And it now seems to work with international transactions to a degree. I haven't tested that yet, so don't ask me too many questions about it. If you've got some experience of how the IBAN and international transactions work with Tide, do post it down in the comments below because I know that was a bit of a sticking point for some of you in the past. So as I say, I've used business bank accounts from a lot of the big names over the years and generally they've been a nightmare to deal with. From accounts taking weeks if not months to be opened through to appalling or non-existent customer service. I remember with one particular bank, I'll not say who so that I don't get sued, but I had a problem with my account and I needed to speak to someone quite urgently. I spent hours on hold to the customer service line, didn't manage to get through to anyone and their online support chat service just wasn't working. I literally just couldn't get in touch with my bank at all and that was a business account through a big name who I was paying quite a lot of money for per month and it was just non-functional. Eventually I gave up and switched banks and ironically the one team who did pick up the phone quite quickly was our account closure team and they just didn't care that I was closing the account. It was as if they just didn't want to deal with small businesses at all. So when I switched to Tide over five years ago now, it was like a breath of fresh air. They actually seemed to care and technology is clearly their core focus. So much so that they're now offering services that are in a different league to bigger names who are in the same sector. So anyway, we briefly talked earlier about all the different types of account you can get. Obviously, it all started out just with the free business account, but they've now got a savings account. They've got the plus account, pro account, cashback account. So just go into the different options there and see what suits you. But on top of that, if you're setting up a brand new business, they'll even do the company registration for you. So there's more about that here. And it even says, yes, it really is free. We'll pay the £12 incorporation fee on your behalf. So they even cover the costs of it. And this is a new one on me. You get the Tide accounting software free for six months if you go down this route. It's only for single shareholder companies, but for plenty you know, plumbers, electricians, builders, all that sort of thing. If you want to set up limited, this could be a really easy way of going about it. And then on top of that, they can provide a virtual office address, which is really, really handy for a limited company because obviously once you're limited, a lot more information is in the public realm and you don't necessarily want your own personal address being shown on company's house. So they'll set up a virtual office address for you. And they've now brought out a card reader. So if you're wanting to accept debit and credit cards from customers. I used to be partnered with iZettle, but when PayPal took them over, they just don't really seem to care about small businesses that much anymore. But here's another route you can go down, so that's great news. £49 for the reader, no monthly fees, and it's a 1.5% transaction fee, so that's all pretty reasonable. We've also got options for expense cards, invoicing, which we briefly touched on before, accepting direct debits. They've got all the open banking integrations and accounting integrations. So if you use any of these guys for your accounting software, it should all just integrate with Tide pretty seamlessly. And even if it's not listed here, you can get in touch with your accounting software provider and there should be ways and means of getting it to connect. And then on top of all of that, we've got Tide Accounting. And this is something I'm going to look at in a separate video because I want to go into this in some detail and I don't want this video being too long. But it looks like it's going to do things like invoice matching, personalized invoices, payment links, cash flow management. Look at this. We've got balance sheets, profit and loss account, trial balance. So if you find accounting software from some of the bigger names a little bit daunting, this might be a better option for sole traders and small businesses who just don't need that level of complexity. And by the way, to answer a question that we mentioned earlier, does the account now come with the £85,000 FSCS protection because it never used to? Well, yes, it does by the looks of it, because the account itself is provided by Clearbank, and there you can see there, Clearbank is authorised by the Prudential Regulation Authority, blah, blah, blah. So if you do like sitting with a business bank account with lots of money in it, which I don't generally advise, but it should be protected to a degree. 
About the only thing Tide doesn't seem to handle at the moment is checks. You can't bank them and you can't write them. So if your business is heavily reliant on checks, I'm afraid this probably isn't going to be the account for you. But keep an eye on the Tide website because I think it is something they are working on. Apart from that, there's no monthly fees, no setup costs, no contract, and they still support cash absolutely fine. You basically do all your cash related stuff via your local post office. The only charges are for transfers in and out of the account. And as I say, if you use the code business toolbox when you sign up, you'll get a little bit of cash back and they'll waive those transaction charges for the first year. But do double check down in the description to check if that is a current offer. This video is getting really long now, so if you want to know more about a Tide account and some of the more in-depth features, I've written a full review over on the Small Business Toolbox website, link down in the description below. But generally speaking, if you operate a fairly normal UK-based business and you don't want to wait weeks for an account to be up and running, then Tide might well be worth looking into. Give it a try, see how it works for you, post back in the comments below to let everyone else know how you got on, and at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out for your business, it's easy enough to switch these days. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe, and in a later video, I will give you a full guided tour of the Tide accounting software as well. For now, good luck on your small business journey, and we shall see you next time. Tatty bye.